Hurricane Barrel is hours away from landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula where more hurricane force winds, storm surge, and flooding is expected. And then once we go into the weekend, this hurricane is expected to take a turn to the north, eventually going towards areas like Texas where more impacts from Hurricane Barrel are expected. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Hurricane Barrel and why I think there will be some major impacts to areas like Texas, including flooding rains, some storm surge, hurricane force winds and even the potential for a tornado outbreak so we are going to begin with what hurricane barrel is doing right now in the caribbean sea and you'll notice it is still a ripper of a hurricane this thing has shown really limited signs of weakening over the last 24 hours with that said it does appear deceiving on the infrared imagery and even on the satellite imagery you'll actually notice when we zoom in in a few minutes you'll also notice this the eye is actually still there you can kind of see it just peeking out just a little bit it's noticeable where the circular area of spin is just to the west to Jamaica and just to the east of the Yucatan Peninsula, but it is deceiving. It is not as intense as it was before. This has been downgraded to a Category 2 hurricane with sustained winds near 110 miles per hour. It's a borderline major hurricane, but it is still a pretty intense hurricane nonetheless, even with it being downgraded to a Category 2. And overall, still a really impressive eye wall. We have a ton of storms still blowing up around this hurricane. That convection that's currently blowing up around the hurricane, though, is again deceiving in a lot of ways. And one of the main reasons why is because if you look on the east and south side of hurricane barrel right now you'll notice the clouds and the storms there they're barely moving that's a factor of the wind shear that we're currently seeing here in the western caribbean sea and this was forecasted we are expecting this hurricane to continue to go through a very high shear environment here across parts of the western caribbean sea today and as this approaches the yucatan peninsula there will likely be at least a little bit more weakening until it gets to areas like cancun one other thing i do want to point out is that the eye of this hurricane has taken a slightly further northerly track than initially forecasted, meaning that this actually might go a bit further up to the north than originally forecasted. And we'll talk more about that here in just a second on what that means for the next 24 hours and what that might mean for Texas down the road. I have mentioned that this is a very deceiving hurricane, and I've seen a lot of posts over the last 24 hours on Twitter, for example, where people are saying, wow, this convective activity must mean it's intensifying again, or the eye is actually becoming more clear. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that in this case, again, we have a lot of wind shear, we have a lot of dry air in this area, and the pressure is continually increasing, and that's one way we can determine intensity as well. The pressure is up to about 972 millibars, so as that continues to increase, this is going to be a weaker hurricane in nature, so that's good news, but again, it's not weakening at a rapid pace. This has been a very intense hurricane, so it's going to take time for this thing to weaken, especially since it's not making an imminent landfall um, until at least to the Yucatan Peninsula, because it does right now, it's literally in open water, so it's not going to weaken and extremely fast. Obviously, it's near the Cayman Islands, but that small island there is not going to weaken this by really anything. It would be a very tiny weakening, even if it made landfall in areas like the Cayman Islands. So I just kind of want to point that out for those that are wondering. Now, here's the official track from the National Hurricane Center in their latest advisory. Uh, again, notice the wind field for the hurricane is actually pretty small. So even then, this is going to be a very small area where it makes actual impacts as a hurricane when it comes to hurricane force winds. It's still going to bring storm surge, especially up here, closer areas areas like Cancun and Playa del Carmen, where we are expecting really significant storm surge in those areas on the northern side of this hurricane, as the strongest winds will be going east to west, right into the shoreline. Comparatively to down near like Belize, for example, the wind's actually going to be going the other way. So storm surge is not going to be as much of a factor down there, unless this hurricane decides to go a bit further down to the south on the southerly line. Nonetheless, this is still expected to make landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula very early tomorrow morning as a hurricane, more than likely as a low-end Category 2 hurricane with sustained winds around 95 to 105 miles per hour. So again, could be a Category 1 or Category 2. Now after this, it does start to move into the Gulf of Mexico late tomorrow night, so it will be a tropical storm by then as it weakens over land. By the time we go into Saturday, it's going to kind of meander down here in the southwestern Gulf. Overall, rapid intensification is not expected in this area as it's going to be battling still some shear and some dry air. But once we go into Sunday, depending on the track of this, this does have at least a small window to be able to rapidly intensify, meaning that this could go from either a high-end tropical storm or a low-end hurricane, all the way up maybe to even a major hurricane. That's if it stays in the Gulf of Mexico for a long period of time. Right now, it is forecasted still to go towards areas like South Texas and Northern Mexico. That's at least the uh, thinking at this point. And by the way, the National Hurricane Center has been spot on with their forecasts over the last several days. The accuracy of the track's been off the charts. Literally, this hurricane in particular has gone literally a long 
along the track where they put the placement of the cone. So it's really impressive so far. Not saying that's going to happen because there are factors that could change the path of this further south or north. In this case, we could see this go along the easterly path of this particular cone of uncertainty, and it could go towards areas like Houston. We also could see this go further to the west and go towards areas like Mexico as more of a rain event. Now, if it goes further to the north, like on this track, for example, it could re-intensify into a stronger hurricane and go towards Houston, where we could be seeing some major impacts. Now, either way, there are going to be impacts to Texas, I think, at this point, at least for South Texas, where it is expected to re-intensify at least to a Category 1 hurricane by Monday morning when it makes landfall in Texas. Right now, the main concerns will be some storm surge, some high winds, and the potential even for a few tornadoes. Now let's talk more about the track of Hurricane Barrel and where it's expected to go throughout the Gulf of Mexico. I'm going to begin by showing you the computer model runs from last night on the spaghetti charts, and I'm going to show you what it has now for today in terms of the latest computer model runs, because it gives you an idea of the consistency between the models here. So first off, there's a few different scenarios that happen in the Gulf of Mexico, one of which is that it tries to rapidly intensify and moves towards Houston. That is one of multiple scenarios that could happen, but this is one that's been a little bit more consistent. And then the other one that's been more consistent is a landfall somewhere either in Mexico or back down in South Texas, which is where the bulk of the computer models have been going, at least from last night. Now, today it's pretty similar, but there are a couple of changes. There are a couple models that actually bring it further to the south in parts of Mexico. That would be a more weak pattern, really, for this particular hurricane. But actually, a lot more models over the last, really, 18 hours or so have actually changed path a little bit, and they've become in more unison about this making landfall in South Texas or very far northern Mexico. In this particular scenario, rapid intensification would be about a 40 to 50 percent chance of happening. So it's something that we're going to definitely have to monitor for over the next 24 hours, and it's really going to depend more on how intense this particular storm is as it goes into the Gulf of Mexico. Because the more it weakens over the Yucatan, the better off I think Texas would be in this particular scenario. But I would at least, no matter what, expect flooding, rainfall, high winds, and the potential even for a few tornadoes, in addition to the potential for storm surge. Now, notice no computer models bring this towards Houston on this particular uh, run from several different computer models, so that's good news. But some of the ensembles say otherwise. There is still some uncertainty with this. The further north it tracks over the Yucatan, the better chance there is of this going towards Houston. So over the next 24 hours, I think are going to be critical to whatever happens in the Gulf of Mexico. That is why there is just so much uncertainty right now regarding Hurricane Barrel. But no matter what, I think this is going to make landfall somewhere in Texas or very far northern Mexico. Either way, one of those two things is going to happen. It could rapidly intensify if it goes towards Houston, or it would be a lower end hurricane if it makes landfall back down near like Galveston, for example, in far southern Texas. This is the latest from several different computer models on the intensity of Hurricane Barrel as it goes into the Yucatan and then once it gets closer to the United States. And notice most models are on board with this weakening either to a low-end category one hurricane or a tropical storm as it moves over the Yucatan Peninsula tonight into tomorrow morning and then once it enters back into the Gulf of Mexico there is a split between this either rapidly intensifying or just staying as a tropical storm notice many models have this as just a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico some bring this to a low-end category one hurricane and then there are one or two computer models that do account for rapid intensification like the HWFI model which brings this back up to a category category two hurricane but even then doesn't really show it getting back to major hurricane status i still wouldn't rule out yet that there could be a potential for this going to major hurricane status if this takes a turn towards houston if it goes towards galveston or south texas i really don't think this gets any worse than a category one hurricane but again it could vary a lot depending on what happens really over the yucatan peninsula tonight and tomorrow morning i'm going to show you two different scenarios that could happen with hurricane barrel in the gulf of mexico and i think there's really no other in between with this i think it's either going to go crazy or it's going to be a pretty normal either tropical storm or category one hurricane this is what it looks like as we go into sunday morning on the icon model and notice the icon model has this as a much more organized and more intense hurricane by sunday and then once we go into monday it brings it up between houston and gabelston as a much stronger hurricane potentially as like a category two or even a little bit higher than that so that's a possibility as we go into monday that it could rapidly intensify but again if that does happen we will know ahead of time it will not be something that happens extremely last second like right when it gets to like Houston or something like that. So that's something that we'll know more ahead of time. But again, I think by tomorrow, we'll have more of an idea of if something like this is possible or if it will happen. Now, the European model is more of a scenario that I think is a bit more realistic, at least for right now, compared to the Icon model. It brings us into the Gulf of Mexico as a tropical storm and eventually intensifies it into a Category 1 hurricane. By Sunday afternoon and evening, it 
eventually makes a close appearance to Mexico and South Texas. And then by Monday, this makes landfall in northern Mexico and as well as South Texas. So overall, this I think is a bit more of a realistic scenario, but we could still see something in between this where it goes into Texas. Now, I might be wondering where could we see a tornado outbreak? Well, we're going to talk more about that in our next video because it really depends on where this makes landfall. But I do think there is going to be a potential for at least a few tornadoes across parts of South Texas back near Houston, where we could see the potential for a small scale tornado outbreak out of this hurricane. But again, it's going to depend a ton on where this hurricane goes. If it makes landfall down here in Mexico, tornadoes would be possible down here. If it makes landfall up in Houston, for example, the tornado threat would be back up over in East Texas and Louisiana. It's just a completely different story no matter where this goes. So just make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll continue to post updates here over the next few days.